Today I am here to tell you about my journey through a game so old, your parents probably played it. Despite its age, it has a dedicated player base mostly comprised of people ages 30 to 60. You'll learn about the start of my journey, and inevitable descent into madness. First however, you might want to know what this is all about. EverQuest was the most popular MMORPG for the five years it ruled before World of Warcraft came out. In 2008, Project 1999 started development, it was released in 2009. This server has one goal, to recreate the first two years of EverQuest, covering the vanilla release, and the first two expansions. The Ruins of Kudnark, and the Scars of Velius. this just isn't some random private server either. It is officially sanctioned by Daybreak Studios, the current developers of EverQuest. This server is 100% legal. All you need is a legal copy of EverQuest Titanium. Most people download it, because CD-ROM drives are a thing of the past. You could in a matter of 10 minutes, be playing Project 1999 EverQuest. Your progress will not be deleted due to a cease and desist order. Most of you may be wondering, why people want to play a 23-year-old game. Sure it may look like a poorly aged relic of the past, but appearances can be deceiving. It may seem simple on the surface, but deep beneath lies a pure RPG. You won't find an MMORPG with mechanics like these. Project 1999 EverQuest is cruel and unforgiving. In World of Warcraft, when you die, you lose a bit of gold and have to walk back to your corpse. In Project 1999 EverQuest, when you die, you lose experience, you may even revert back to your previous level. You also lose everything on you. Sure you can go back to your corpse and grab all of your stuff, but that XP is long gone unless you happen to have a high level friend with a resurrection spell capable of restoring it. There are no hearthstones in Project 1999 EverQuest. Certain classes have the ability to gate back to their home location, others are capable of porting you. If you, or your party members are not playing a class that has the bind affinity spell, when you die you return to your bound spot wherever it may be. The trick is of course, just don't die. But that is easier said than done. Especially in a game, where you have to rely on other human beings just to get a level. There are a few classes capable of soloing a good portion of this game. However most of the classes require you to play nice and party up with other people, especially as you get further into the game. Your typical MMORPG has instances and dungeon finders. Not this game. Not only is there a lack of a party finding tool that warps you right into the dungeon. There are no instances. When you go into a dungeon, you are sharing the mobs of that dungeon with anyone who might be in there. As of writing this, there are nearly 900 people on the green server, that is the server I am playing on. It gets really crowded really quick. If a group does not have room for you, well I guess you are a shit out of luck. Worst of all, if you are a class that can't solo and there is no group, well I guess you are fucked, you'll just have to try some other place. There is a reason that everyone has an alt in this game, because if there is nowhere for you to level due to one reason or another, you can't play the game. So you might as well work on an alt. Even when it comes to traveling, this game is archaic. You know those games with mini maps or maps that track where you are on the map? Those games are for bitches. All you need is the skill sense heading and online maps to navigate. You put one point into sense heading at the start of the game, and mash it until the cows come home. There is no compass, not a single thing that helps you navigate this world except for sense heading and the online maps. You better believe me when I say you need to get sense heading to at least over 150. This game looks so old, and everything looks the fucking same. Have you ever tried to navigate around white snowy mountains with only a few visual landmarks? Without sense heading, you would be fucked. Even then with sense heading, it is easy to get lost. It may sound like I'm complaining, but I'm really not. I'm just a hardcore masochist, the type that likes getting verbally abused and stepped on by women. I love this 23 year old game for all the reasons listed above. There may be a lack of visuals, but your imagination kicks into overdrive. It feels like I'm playing Dungeons and Dragons. On an epic adventure, this game may be cold, harsh, unforgiving and extremely brutal, but I love every second. You can take all of your modern MMORPGs and stick them up your ass. If you call yourself a gamer, you owe it to yourself to play this. Unlike World of Warcraft Classic there is difficulty to be had. Try navigating to the guards in the fortress of fucking solitude, when you accidentally pulled two mobs instead of one. The difficulty comes from the learning curve. You'll either get over it, or this game will band you over and demand you squeal like a pig. Go on. Do it. Download this game right now. Stop watching and do it. Take off your little comfortable gamer diaper, and let your metaphorical gamer balls drop. The adults are talking here, 
This is serious shit, so you better take it seriously. So, you've downloaded and installed Project 1999 EverQuest. The first question you have to answer, is what class to play. First you have the Warrior. Warriors are the masters of armed combat and defense. They take point in battle as tanks. They are absolutely terrible at soloing mobs, but work good in groups and raids. They pair up well with shamans and druids in duos. They have poor aggro leveling up though due to weapon procs that won't fire. Next is the Monk. In Kunark it is OP, in Velius it is really OP. Monks devote their energies to the pursuit of physical perfection. Monks don't need heavy armor or weapons for the most part, instead they settle their fights with fisty cuffs. They can solo decently, and work great in groups and raids. Up next is the absolute worst class when it comes to soloing, the Rogue. They pump out massive DPS in raids, and do fairly well in groups. Rogues use piercing, slashing and blunt weapons. They take advantage of enemies by attacking from behind. They can pick locks, detect traps, pick pockets and fall safely from great heights. Do you like carpal tunnel syndrome? Then the bard is the class for you. Honestly I have only played a bard for a few hours in the past but they are really cool. They are the best soloers in the game. They work good in duos. They are amazing in groups and raids. No one likes a lazy bard. Bards are jack of all trades adventurers. They use songs to create a wide variety of magical effects. In combat they use melee weapons. Bard's songs can regenerate health and mana. Increase attack speed and accuracy. They can charm enemies, and help the party resist a bunch of different types of damage. However that's not all, they can even increase your movement speed. Bards can create multiple effects at once, by weaving together different songs, a bard can customize effects to any situation. So when I said no one likes a lazy bard, I mean do not play one unless you are absolutely dedicated to playing it to the best of your ability, otherwise you are just dead weight. The ranger is the first hybrid class on the list. The ranger is part warrior, and part druid, combining the combat skills and magical abilities. Rangers are all around average in terms of compatibility. They can't solo, they are average in duos groups and raids. They are a lightly armored offensive class that are focused on dealing damage. They can use all types of weapons, and even dual wield at level 17. The ranger is highly offensive, but has poor defensive capabilities. They have a lower skill cap on taunt, riptus, disarm, dodge and parry compared to warriors. They can serve as light tanks, they have some great aggroing abilities. Additionally rangers have the tracking skill, they can use bows and snares, they can also bow kite semi-decently. Next is the paladin, another hybrid class. They are a hybrid of the warrior, and the cleric, with the ability to tank, heal, and resurrect. They are a strong melee class. Paladins are just as bad as rangers when it comes to soloing. They are less than satisfactory in duos and raids, but they work well in groups. They don't even get any spells until level 9. They do have good root, stun and calm abilities. Honestly this is one of the classes I know the least about, however I did group with one ones, he was a great tank. The final hybrid class is the Shadow Knight. Personally I consider this to be the coolest class in the game just by its name alone. It's a cross between a warrior and a necromancer. Shadow Knights use fear, pain, and disease to attack. They are a plate wearing melee class, capable of wielding many kinds of weapons and dark spells. Shadow Knights are considered the ultimate group tank, with huge, instant controllable aggro by spamming lower level spells. Playing as one of the bigger races will give you bigger HP pools, though at costs we will discuss later. The Shadow Knight is a slightly above average soloer, they are great in duos and groups, and are also slightly above average when it comes to raiding. Out of the hybrid classes, we have reached the Healy Boy class. The Cleric. They are the default healing class. Surprisingly middle of the row average at soloing. They work great in duos, even better in groups and are essential in raids for obvious reasons. They have the best HP buffs in the game. It's a good and essential class, if you like healing this one is for you. Another Healy Boy class is the Druid. While not as great at healing, the Druid is an amazing class for one major reason. You are going to make Platinum hand over fist by teleporting people all over the place. Having access to easy transportation makes you everyone's friends. You also get great stat buffs and rejuvenation spells. The Druid is decent at soloing, average in duos, and slightly below average in groups and raids beyond level 40, mostly due to the fact that the Cleric has bigger heals. Don't let that discourage you. The Druid is a great class. Now we enter the Shaman, the biggest buffing boy of them all. At lower levels their buffs are decent, at higher levels they are insanely good. If you are lucky, a high level shaman might wander into your zone and buff you. 
These high-level buffs will give you temporary godlike powers. Everyone loves a shaman, they are great soloers, they are amazing in duos, and great in groups and raids. They also have decent healing spells. However there is one massive problem with the shaman. This will keep many people from playing them. Torpor is a level 60 spell that gives enormous health recovery. It heals 300 hit points every 6 seconds for 24 seconds. However this is a spell you can't just buy at a vendor. It falls rarely off of mobs in high end zones and costs 70,000 to 100,000 platinum, depending on your server. So yeah, that's a huge deterrent for playing a shaman. They are great at making money, but the amount of money you need to buy the spell is a lot. You also need to worry if anyone has the spell available for sale. So you have to simultaneously farm for it, and farm platinum, as I hear most dedicated raiding guilds won't take you without Torpor. Don't take my word for it. I remember watching a stream a few years ago. Torpor dropped in a streamer's group, and it was like a major event, everyone knew about it. If you don't care about the end game grind, then I seriously recommend this class, it's great. When I first played Everquest back in 2002, I played an Ogre Shaman. Enough about the Shaman, next we have the Wizard. Wizards use fire, ice and magic. They have highly destructive spells and are the primary magic using class. They wear cloth armor, and use blunt weapons and daggers. Along with the druid they have the ability to teleport. This, like the druid will make you everyone's best friend. The wizard is a good soloer. They suck in duos and groups, but are amazing in raids for their raw damage. If you want to role play as Gandalf the Grey, this is the class for you. Now this next class is going to confuse you. The magician. When I first played EverQuest I wondered, what the fuck is the difference between a wizard and magician? They are master summoners, they can call elemental pets to do their bidding, they can also conjure useful items. Like the wizard they wield cloth armor, blunt weapons and daggers. Magicians can conjure food, weapons, armor, magical jewelry. In battle they can encase the entire group in a shield of fire. They can also lower a monster's resistance to magic. Like the wizard, the magician is good at soloing. They are also good in duos, groups and raids. The second last class is the enchanter. Enchanters have a pet called an animation. Enchanters can improve the mind of their allies, giving them amazing mana regeneration and mental enhancement buffs. They have haste buffs, and have the power of illusion allowing them to take the form of different creatures and races. Enchanters can mesmerize opponents removing them from battle. They are all over an incredible class. They are great soloers. They are great in duos, amazing in groups and great in raids. The final class, is honestly one of my favorites. The Necromancer. I was always disappointed by the lack of a proper necromancer class in World of Warcraft, the lore would even allow it. Necromancers get skeleton pets. They also have fire, magic and poison spells. They can mesmerize, snare, fear, charm, root and lull enemies. Being a necromancer comes with difficulties we will discuss later. But I honestly love this class. They are great soloers, great in duos, great in groups, but not so good in raids. Depending on the race you pick they also have one of the best starting zones in the game. You may be wondering at this point, when am I going to get to the part where I talk about my experiences so far playing the game. The zoomers or other people who never played the game won't properly understand just how amazing this 23 year old game is, if I just talk about my experiences. Believe me, we'll get there. But without a proper understanding, it will just look like some ancient pile of shit. So with patience, I'm getting there. Just not quite yet. There is still a lot of information we need to get through to give you a proper understanding, and appreciation for how amazing this game is. Once you've picked your class, you need to pick your race. Races are divided by good and evil. Good and evil players can play together, but good players can't go into evil cities, and vice versa for evil players. This is just at the beginning of the game though. On the good side you have barbarians, dwarves, erudites, gnomes, halflings, high elves, wood elves, and humans. On the evil side you have Dark Elves, Ogres, Trolls and the race even the other evil races hate, the Ixar. Choosing a race can be difficult, as depending on the class you picked, you will only have access to certain races, even if you are a good race, if you play for example, a Necromancer, you will be considered evil. Being evil adds extra difficulty to the game, especially if you are an Ixar, because everyone hates you. Aside from good and evil, you have to consider the stats your race brings to the class. Some races are better for the class you are playing, you also have to deal with experience loss penalties. For example if you are going to play a shaman. Barbarians, ogres, trolls and Ixar can play shaman. 
barbarians, the only good race for the shaman only lose 5% of their experience upon death. Ogres, lose 15% of their experience upon death. Troll and Ixar lose 20% of their experience upon death. This is exchanged for the racial benefits, like the insane health regeneration trolls have, but carefully consider your race, did you know there are only 8 inventory slots in this game? You can however put a bag in that inventory slot, which acts as expanded inventory. However depending on the bag, you can only put certain things into that bag. You also need to consider your carry weight. Going over can be detrimental to your stats. Wow, all of that exposition is finally out of the way. That's only the basics of it. I'm sure I'll have more exposition dumps. If you are still here, you are a paragon of patience. But it was essential. As I mentioned, this is a pure RPG. So you created your character and load into the game. In my case I made a barbarian shaman on the green server, I recommend you play on green too. The first question you need to answer is, where the fuck am I? You spawn into your starting city. So the first thing I did was figure out what city I was in, where I was in that city, and spammed sense heading like my life depended on it to properly orientate myself. Everfrost Peaks is the hardest starting zone. It's cold, brutal and like I said before. Everything looks the fucking same. One thing I neglected to mention is certain races are able to see in the dark. The Barbarian isn't one of them. There are spells that can help you see in the dark, but I don't have one of them. All I had in the beginning, was one buffing spell Inner Fire which improves my AC and hit points, and a weak healing spell. Good luck casting that healing spell when you are in combat. I tried. It fizzles, gets interrupted. Did I mention that this game operates off a weapon skill style system like in classic World of Warcraft? Well it's the same thing except you also need to master different magic skills if you are a caster. The early healing spells are also dog shit, you are likely to spam your healing spell, draining your mana bar and you will still need health. That's where the core mechanic of Project 1999 EverQuest comes in. Sitting. Yep. The primary mechanic of this game is sitting down, and waiting for your mana and health to regenerate. You'll do more sitting than fighting. Especially when nighttime rolls around and you have to sit in the safety of the light because you can't see two feet in front of you. If you thought navigating the world was hard. Try doing it at night when you can't see. Starting out if you are one of the races without night vision, you are playing for 40 or so minutes and sitting for 20 or so minutes, aside from the sitting you are doing in the daytime to recover your health and mana. Level 1 in Everfrost is kind of brutal. Everything but the decaying skeletons can kill you. In this game you can tell if you are capable of killing an enemy by right clicking them, or pressing C. If the text is blue, go for it. If the text is white, you are risking death. If the text is yellow or above, it's certain death unless you are well buffed or in a party. Look at that I'm still dumping exposition on you. There's just so much to say. Thankfully level 2 is the fastest level you will get. You still have to be extremely careful. Everfrost Peaks has a lot of patrolling mobs. So many in fact that I could stand at the entrance and pull mobs. This is dangerous though, because everything aggros you. If you attack a spider for example, and another spider is near, you will aggro both of the spiders. At this point in the game it was safe to assume that fighting two mobs would end with me being very dead. Thankfully you can run to the guards and they will take care of it. However the entrance to the guards is somewhat obscured, it's easy to miss unless you are paying attention to your surroundings. When you are panicked and trying to reach sanctuary, it's easy to make navigational errors. Once you've gained a level and killed a few mobs you'll be earning money. Currency works different in EverQuest. There are 4 currencies. Copper, Silver, Gold, and Platinum. 10 Copper is equal to 1 Silver. 10 Silver is equal to 1 Gold. 10 Gold is equal to 1 Platinum. All of this currency also contributes to your weight. So you can't run around with millions of Platinum in your pocket. You need to deposit it into your bank. Now that you have some coin, you can pick up some of your level 1 spells, that is if you have level 1 spells. I have 9 in total. I went to my shaman trainer and picked up a few. You don't get new spells every level, or every 2 levels. It's rather random. Shaman for example get spells at level 1, 5, 9 and 14. Some of your spells may not even be at the trainers, because some classes share spells, in the 30 hours I spent recording for this video. I spent 12 of those hours in Everfrost Peaks. That was all in one day by the way. I can tell you my eyes felt like they were bleeding by the end of the day. The first few levels are not all that thrilling to be honest. Especially if you don't have night vision and are restricted from playing the game because you can't see. I spent 12 hours slowly killing bears, spiders, gnolls, skeletons and goblins.
Spending all this time, doing the exact same thing for hours on end, can wear down on someone's psyche. Killing the same thing. Over. And over. And over. And over. And over. And over. Is one of the key features of EverQuest. There are not a lot of quests in EverQuest, which is quite ironic because the name of the game is EverQuest. If you are completely new to the game, finding a quest can be difficult. You can't just right click on someone, get a quest, and be on your merry way. You need to hail an NPC first by pressing H, and figure out the dialogue options by what they are saying. Of course you could go to the wiki and figure it out that way like I did. Still though, it takes discovery. You know that scroll in your inventory at the start of the game? If you read it, find the person it's talking about, and hand it to them, you get a nifty piece of armor. There are even advanced quests beyond that basic quest, but that's for you to figure out. Some quests are thankfully repeatable, but we'll get into that quest later. The early levels are definitely the threshold that tests your patience. Do you have what it takes to get through it? Are you willing to stand, hit, and sit for hours on end, just to reach the slightly higher levels and enjoy some slightly different gameplay? If you are, bravo. There is a lot of fun to be had. They didn't call this game ever crack back in the day for nothing. However Project 1999 EverQuest does not hold your hand in any way. It will bitch slap you if you slip up and make a mistake. You may be standing and hitting, but you need to watch your surroundings like a hawk. One slip up could mean hours worth of work down the drain, more so at the higher levels. But you are building up the proper type of paranoia. You're not going crazy, the voices in your head are guiding you towards your salvation. Listen to the voices. Love the voices. The voices care for you. They love you. They will keep you safe at night, and hold on to you as if you are a newborn child. Oh wait, what was I talking about? Ah yes, Everfrost. It's amazing that no matter how many polar bear cubs I kill, the numbers don't really go down. It's just an endless cycle. So embrace the madness. Love the madness. Kiss the madness. Make sweet love to the madness. Have its children. Let the madness verbally abuse and step on you. It gets off on shit like that. You know my mother wonders why I'm 35 years old, single with no children. I can safely say this game is at least 5% of the reason. I'm going to blame the other 95% on the fact that it's hard to find a woman that won't run away when you ask her to step on you in the heat of the moment. She already has grandchildren anyway, I have more EverQuest to play. Those little baby polar bears aren't going to kill themselves. So after 12 hours, I went from level 1 to 6. I call that amazing progress. At level 5 I got more buffs. Look at all those muscly arms. Not only do I feel like a cat, I can use the gate spell, summon a pouch and a drink. One drink at a time. Writing this script, I realize I completely missed a buff. This entire time I did not notice I was failing to use scale skin, which increases my AC. God what a noob. I also have not been using sicken. But to be fair I have to navigate through this cold zone to some hut out in the middle of nowhere to pick it up. I know I could optimize my class, but I'm really fucking lazy. No wonder I didn't pick Bard. Well that and the severe carpal tunnel syndrome. Seriously I played a Bard to level 3 once. I stopped playing because my wrists were hurting so much, but it was a lot of fun to play, 10 out of 10, would play it if I was 15 years younger. Some people would consider all of the downtime in EverQuest to be a negative. I say on the contrary it respects your time. After all during that time you could do the following. Fap, have sex with your significant other, take a walk, watch a video, actually take care of your family, eat, drink, take a nap, read a book, watch this video, pick your nose, watch anime, read manga, write your thesis, take a look at your class spell so you don't spend 30 hours not using an essential spell, take a shit, take a shower. You filth the animal, watch Dragon Ball Z abridged, seriously watch it anyway it's funny as hell. Charge your phone, clean your house, go to Taco Bell, make a dating profile and get ignored by every woman on the platform because you're fucking weird, explain to your mom why you are such a degenerate and will never sire offspring, read a guide, read the wiki, write a book, play another game, go to the store, play mini golf, actually work, if you are at work, play with your phone, take nude pictures, cry yourself to sleep, be a productive, and responsible member of society, other MMORPGs are so demanding. EverQuest only demands a certain amount of your time. However just be careful, because if you are sitting at the edge of a zone, you run the risk of someone running a train on you. No, seriously. I'm not joking. It's a real thing. You see unlike World of Warcraft Classic, 
you can't just run a few feet away from the mobs causing them to lose interest. Those mobs will follow you until you either exit the zone, die, find the guards if there are any guards, in that case the guard will kill them. When the person leading the train no longer has aggro, said mobs start walking slowly back to their place of origin. However they will attack any player in their way. So if you are sitting at the edge of the zone and someone runs a train on you, those mobs will turn around, and fucking end you, unless you exit the zone ASAP. People will usually call out trains in OOC, the general chat for each zone in EverQuest. Sometimes they might be too panicked to remember to inform the zone that a train of pure death is heading their way. Your life flashes before your eyes, when hours upon hours of hard work could be lost. The victims are often those who are AFK. So while I said it's okay to go do those things, pay very close attention to the game if your surroundings are questionable, I have to say I was rather pleased with myself when I hit level 6. In a normal MMORPG I would be a much higher level by now. However EverQuest is more on the hardcore side of things, so every level gives me a massive dopamine hit. I was officially done murdering baby polar bears. It was now time to move on to bigger game. First I wanna talk a little about Everfrost. It is an isolated zone at the northern tip of one of the game's original continents, Antinica. There are only three exits to the zone. In the far north is the exit to Hollis, the city you start in if you play a barbarian. To the far east of the zone is an exit to a level 15 to 50 plus dungeon called Permafrost. Being a level 6, going there would obviously be suicide, plus it doesn't lead to anything. That leaves the entrance to the far south, to a dungeon called Black Burrow. If you can navigate your way far south to its entrance, you'll discover two guards at around level 4 or 5. I am level 6, I have no gear, I only have my low level buffs. I tried to pull one of the guards, but they are so close together I ended up pulling both of them. In this moment I panicked, I thought about running back to the north where the guards were, but I would never make it. My only hope was to run inside. In the tunnel on route to the entrance there are two other guards. So it's safe to say, it was a close call when I finally zoned into Black Burrow. Before I get back to my tale, I should inform you of how you are supposed to reach the rest of civilization. It's actually rather easy, it's just a short dash through a small hallway to an exit. However in between that, you can pull up to 6 knolls, waiting outside when you exit to Kano's Hills, are more knolls. If you are a barbarian, you are pretty much stuck leveling in Everfrost and Black Burrow until you either have a clearing to get through, or are strong enough to kill all of the mobs on route with no issue. The thing is, Black Burrow is not a bad dungeon. It can get really busy, if you recall dungeons are not instanced. However Black Burrow is the holy grail for lower levels, as it drops one item. Noel Fangs. There are two places to hand in Noel Fangs. One in Kano's, to get there you need to go south in Kano's hills. The other place is Hollis. As someone brought to my attention, Kano's might give you better experience, but you gain negative reputation with corrupt guards. I didn't learn this little factoid until I was 12 hours into Black Burrow. So the footage shows me handing these Noel Fangs into both places. As you have probably guessed, this quest is repeatable. In Hollis you need to hand in three, in Kano's you only need to hand in one at a time. This is why it's debatable which is better, you get a large chunk of experience for handing them in Hollis, but only a small chunk per each one in Kano's. Being level 6, I could only take on one of these knolls at a time. So I made my way up the tunnel, I killed the first two guards. Then I made a critical lapse in judgment. What if I tried to take on both of the knolls at the front again? It didn't end well. As I was running away from the knolls, I met someone in the tunnel, who couldn't help me because he was also extremely low on health. I ended up dying and reverting back to level 5. Uber Moose helped me get my body back and even hopped on his level 9 shaman to give me spirit of the wolf. What is spirit of the wolf? Well it's a level 9 shaman spell that lets you move faster of course. Everyone wants it, so when you hit level 9 as a shaman, not only can you reach things faster, but you become everyone's best friend. Unfortunately I lost it fast, I ran into a high level skeleton that roams Everfrost. In Everfrost there are decaying skeletons, then there are these skeletons that fuck up lower level players. They look the exact same as the weak decaying skeletons. I had Spirit of the Wolf on, I could outrun it, the only problem was the massive damage it could cause when it hit you. Due to my panic, I found I was extremely lost, and sadly died for a second time. Project 1999 EverQuest is an extremely brutal game. But, I like it. Full of primal wrath and fury I murdered every little polar bear cub in my way, and quickly found myself back at level 6. It felt wonderful. I went back to Black Burrow, and carefully killed Knowles one at time for a few hours. I was slowly gaining experience. 
I mostly stuck to the tunnel at the entrance and the cave entrance into Black Burrow. Ubermus, the guy I mentioned earlier came running at breakneck speed past me with a train of gnolls. Not wanting to be bent over and made a gnolls bitch, I followed him. He apologized for the train. It was honestly no big deal. But while we were sitting, recovering our health and mana, he inspected my gear. The gear I had gathered by slowly collecting pieces from mob drops. Uber then tells me that I need some gear, and says he will go and get me some. He hands me an onyx ear ring to start. It gives A plus 2 to agility, he asked me if I was going to be on for a bit, I told him I'd be on all day. He then informs me he has some stuff in his bank, and that he will get on to his shaman and give it to me. I was extremely grateful. Uber told me that people had been generous to him, so it was time to pay it forward. Tell me, how many people in classic World of Warcraft would take their time to help out a noob like me, I am for all intents and purposes a noob. I played back in the day, and I played on the blue server back around 2017. However I never made it far. I've never made it to max level, hell I've never even made it past level 30. The EverQuest community is extremely generous, to say the least. If someone helps you out, you pay it forward when you can. Uber really came in clutch. He brought to me 11 platinum, and a large sewing kit. Inside of that kit was a shield, a piece of chain mail and a piece of wrist armor. He didn't need to do this. This is just the spirit of the Project 1999 community coming forward. With that 11 plat, I went back to Hollis, and hit the bank, I had saved up some plat. I wasn't really aware how effective gear was in this game. Which really speaks a lot about how shit I am at MMORPGs, because I've been playing them for over 20 years. I kitted myself out with other gear I needed from vendors. If Uber had not brought to my attention that my gear sucks, I would have never become the primal god I am now. I owe a lot to this generous player. I will be paying it forward every single chance I get, while waiting for night time to pass, this generous stranger reminded me of the lesson Uber had passed on to me. Pay it forward. I was AFK, when he started buffing me. I'll remind you that he did not need to do this. I'll also tell you this isn't like throwing a buff on someone like in WoW Classic. He's throwing high level buffs on me, buffs which takes mana. If you know anything by now, mana takes time to regenerate. This is the staggering spirit of Project 1999 EverQuest. You don't have to be nice. You don't have to be generous, you just are. Armed with my new gear and these high level buffs, it was time for me to unleash my fury upon the gnolls. With these buffs, I became a literal level 6 god. I brought the thunder down on these filthy fucking animals. God damn it did it feel good. I fought multiple at a time, dealing critical damage like it wasn't anyone's business. It was like someone was hitting a dopamine button inside of my head. I was on top of the world. You couldn't stop me, you couldn't kill me, I quickly rose from level 6 to 7. With my buffs expiring, I figured it was time to head to Kano's to hand in my null fangs. Handing in the null fangs I had patiently gathered one at a time, I went from one bar into level 7, all the way to level 8. I was on top of the world. Not only was I making progress, but even if I didn't have those high ad buffs I was still a god thanks to Ubermus's generosity and the fact that he reminded me that gear actually matters. Let me give you a quick warning. If you are handing in those fangs and canos you get these things called moonstones. You can hand them into a guy for a tiny bit of experience. In exchange you get Black Burrow Stout. Whatever you do, do not slam back that stout. There is a skill in Project 1999 EverQuest called Alcohol Tolerance. Upon slamming back those Black Burrow Stouts, I wanted to throw up in real life. I'm not good with screen distorting effects like this. If you have an iron stomach and want to level up the skill, all the power to you. I would just sell them back to the guy who gave them to you. If I were to summarize my time in EverQuest, and put that time into an anime arc structure, I would consider my time murdering the wildlife and ever frost the death to the baby polar bears arc. My time before meeting the absolute saint of a man Ubermus, is the depression arc. After that I would consider my glow up and subsequent slaughtering of gnolls the new powers arc. If I were to classify the last part of this video into an anime arc, it would be the paranoid schizophrenic arc. You see there are a set of rules in Project 1999 EverQuest. Things like the play nice policy and their other rules regarding camps, are taken quite seriously. Before I get into what a camp is, it's time for a PSA, because I really want to let the admins and players who might be watching this video know, that while I did reach a point of temporary insanity, I never acted out what I am going to say later in this video. Project 1999, PSA to the admins and players. Please don't ban me, 
I am a good boy and did not act out what I am about to say after this. I want to say to the admins at Project 1999 and the community. That I would never act outwardly hostile to the players. I take the play nice policy quite seriously. It's just that when you are competing for limited resources and spending your precious time in this game, the ugly greedy side of you comes out, at least it does for me. While this may be all internalized and never came out to the surface when interacting with the players, I wanted to include it as part of the video, mostly for entertainment value. I was never intentionally rude, and I do not encourage people to be outwardly rude to others inside of the game, or to compete for mobs as if their life depended on it. By showing my internal thoughts, I may be exposing the mindset of other players. We try to be generous and pay it forward. So please don't ban me, these are just my internal thoughts and I would never act them out or be rude, or say rude things to other players. If you are new to the game, please don't act out what I was feeling internally while I was grinding out Noel Fangs, the player base is nice, generous and will help you out even if you don't ask for it. If you intend on becoming a part of the community, I encourage you to follow suit with the rest. It is only a game, so please play nice. Back to the video. What is a camp you are asking? It's when you, or a group of people are camping a group of mobs. You kill them over, and over, until you leave, or the party splits up. During that time, you effectively own that camp. It's a little more complex than that, I recommend if you are going to play, read the rules. Well anyway now that I was level 8, I could start camping mobs in the basement of Blackborough. During my long hours of doing this, I started to become paranoid, Blackborough is a busy zone and a lane way into the rest of the continent if you want to escape Everfrost or go into it. It is also an amazing place to level due to the Noel Fangs I mentioned earlier. Being a shaman, now with some decent gear for my level, I can solo quite easily and take on most of the mobs in a perimeter around the basement. So for all intents and purposes, I am camping this part of the zone. It's when other people start to appear in your neck of the woods, that you start becoming suspicious. At least I did. I was camping these Noels. The fangs are a semi-rare drop, and I need them in order to level up quicker. So I had to kill these gnolls as fast as I could, if a person came near my camp. I became internally defensive. What the hell is he doing here, go away, this is my camp. We're playing in my head. Of course I would never outwardly say this to another player. However my true greedy nature began to rear its ugly head. Towards the tail end of the second day of playing other people started showing up, this is when the delirium started to set in. I realized how crowded this world was. Everyone is trying to play the game. I am standing in the way of others trying to properly play this game. I need these nettles, I need their fangs to level up. Please don't get in my way of leveling up. I need to make a video. I promised my subscribers. The delirium started to get worse, and worse. I was starting to reach a primal state of mind. As if I were surviving out in the wilderness, competing with other humans over food. My eyes felt like they were bleeding. I had put so many hours into this game already today. I needed to get to the next level. I needed to kill these gnolls. I had to kill so many gnolls, I needed so many gnoll fangs. Please drop a gnoll fang, I need them. These. These are my gnoll fangs. My own. My. Precious. Well would you look at that. I have enough gnoll fangs to reach level 10. It was just temporary insanity, from sitting in front of a computer killing the same thing over and over again hoping to make a small amount of progress towards my ultimate goal. Have some buffs. Everyone have some buffs. I'm a friendly guy, and I'm paying it forward. Woo. Buffs for everyone. This is a wonderful game and I can't wait to reach max level. I should mention that at level 9 I got some new spells, some new buffs and that spell that makes you everyone's friend, Spirit of the Wolf. Satisfied that I had made some progress after another 12 hour gaming session, it was time to log off for the day. So the next day I woke up, ran to Blackborough and immediately reverted back to my primal internal state. There was a group of three camping the basement. While I was annoyed that others were camping the spot I intended to grind, I buffed their group, because I was trying to pay it forward like Ubermus did with me. I camped the first floor. After all I just needed no fangs. My goal for the day was to reach level 12, so I could finally be done with this place. However, I needed a considerable amount of no fangs to reach my goal. This is when I found out about the hand in point in Hollis. The people camping in the basement were quite nice, they were not there for long thankfully. During the six hours I spent on that Saturday morning, my internal delirium reached new heights. Once again, please don't ban me, these are just my internal ramblings and I would never act them out, or encourage others to act them out. Project 1999 EverQuest gets really busy on weekends. 
as most of its players are above the age of 30, have a family, and are productive members of society. It must be nice, I was constantly typing slash who, to see who was in the zone. I camped the basement with primal fury. I wasn't going to miss a mob spawn. I needed these null fangs, once I had all the fangs I needed I was going to be out of here. Being in a constant paranoid state for 6 hours is not good for your mental health. My eyes were wide open, bloodshot. I was hungry for blood. I ran into Uber again. I offered to share the spot with him, however he was going to be in and out of the game and declined my offer. Plenty of people came to visit, despite the horrible monster brewing inside of me I was ready to share the camp with him like a good boy, however no one spoke to me. No one asked to party up. So I continued to destroy these gnolls like a savage animal. I had reached a point where I could successfully take two to three gnolls on at a time. I felt invincible. Occasionally when it was just me in the instance, I would run upstairs and slaughter any gnoll that crossed my path. The nice fun time go juices hit me whenever I looted a fang. The six hours felt like an eternity. I was like a machine, performing the same action, over, and over, and over again. Ah ha 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 I'm not going crazy, you're the crazy one. I just need 24 null fangs to reach level 12. Fuck I ended up with 25 null fangs, I can't have an uneven number when I'm handing them in because I'm OCD as fuck. I guess I'll just get another, and another, and another, ha 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 ha. Yes. I finally have an even number of null fangs. I can finally stop grinding in this fucking place. This is the end of my paranoid delusions that someone is going to come in and steal my camp. I'm on top of the world. I've finally hit level 12. Whoa, 30 hours. It took me 30 hours just to hit level 12. That may be partially due to the fact that I'm a massive fucking noob. But I did it. I'm not done yet. There is still so much to do. I need to hit max level, and do all the fun and game stuff. This is only the beginning of my journey, what a journey it was. Sure it was fraught with paranoid delusions and soul crushing hours spent grinding away at a single enemy. It was fun though. I learned so much about the game in this time. It's people and just how amazingly generous they are. I have so much to look forward to playing this 23 year old game. I've only scratched the surface, I don't know how many days, weeks or months it will take me to reach level 50 and 60. But I honestly don't care. Like in The Hobbit, it's about the journey, the friends you make along the way and the fun times you have, not the destination. This game may seem like a relic of the past. In a lot of ways it is. However if you look deep within, you will discover a rich experience unlike anything you've ever seen. So I honestly encourage you, if you like MMORPGs, if you enjoy difficulty and being a part of a great community like this, full of people who will help you out with no personal gain for themselves, then what are you waiting for? Just please remember, to read the rules and play nice. This world has limited resources. By cooperating with your fellow gamer, you can reach new heights. There will always be toxic members in every community. But don't become one of those people in this community. Thank you very much for watching. I don't honestly know when the next video will come out. Because this game is so time consuming. What you've seen is just the tip of the iceberg. Next time I hope I have some more great stories to share with you. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing. Until next time.